with me to talk on this. <laughs> Let's pray. Because we're talking about prayer. It'd be good to pray. Father, I'm so, so grateful. I'm so honored to be able to speak to your children again. Father, I ask that today as we talk again about prayer, the Lord, may it uh, motivate us to, to talk with you. Father, I thank you above all else that we have access to you. Lord, today during this uh, sermon, I pray that we, our hearts will be prompted to pray. God, uh, you have opened yourself to us. Lord, may we, may we enter into that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I remember um, one of my, growing up, in, growing up in a pastor's home, maybe we were around church more often than, than some people, you know, um, going to church Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday evening, uh, Friday night prayer meetings, Saturday night prayer meetings. Oh, and then sometimes we had guest speakers, so they would come, and so we would have, uh, you know, all week long we'd be at church too, mm -hmm. um, Saturday mornings. Um, but one of the things that we used to do a lot, I remember when I was younger, was uh, we'd have like prayer meetings, and so there'd be different, different stages of the kids during prayer meetings. Uh, sometimes we would be downstairs playing tag, or, um, playing some kind of game or getting into trouble, exploring. We had a big building in Oceanside, and so we would go explore the different areas and the different buildings. Um, then other times, though, I remember being underneath the chairs. So inside, in the sanctuary, we had these plastic chairs, and we would, uh, they were set up, and sometimes we would set up different stations for the different prayer areas, and so sometimes we'd be underneath the prayer, uh, the, 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 the chairs while everybody else is praying. And then other times, I will confess, I did also pray while other, while, while the adults were praying. I took time, and I said, no, let's pray. And I remember enjoying, one thing I enjoyed about prayer was enjoying the prayer book out. There's just a, a peace that comes when you take a time, set aside of time and say, God, I want to I want to meet with you. Or God, he, t he says time, and he says, man, I want to be, be present with you, right? It's really exciting. And I can remember maybe the, I don't know if it's maybe the earliest prayer, uh, that I can remember uh, praying, well, I prayed to receive Jesus, but then after that, just a time that I had of prayer was one of the years uh, living in California, we went to, uh, went on a mission trip to Mexico, so being in San Diego, mission trips to Mexico were, were, were nice to go along, I mean, being really young, not really helping too much, but, but going, when dad would go down and build, help build buildings and church buildings and that, um, but one of the opportunities we had was to go to San Joaquin Valley and to do like we did a, a kids uh, crusade, uh, BBS, you know, all games and fun, and in the evenings we would have service. And I remember one of the services in particular, um, I can remember like, it was like yesterday, um, going through, playing it in my mind, but there was a, we had a, a time of um, preaching and worship and excitement, and then there was a time where um, we responded to the message, right, to have an altar call. And I remember this, this moment was really interesting, but but nobody responded to the altar. Do you remember that? When we, or maybe not. Okay, I have my, I have like photographic memory. But there, nobody responded to the to the message, and so the altar time, and we're like we waited a few minutes. And normally, uh, at least from my experience and growing up in church and growing up in prayer times, you know, there was a pretty typical response was, hey, after the message is given, every everybody responded. Like even if you didn't need to respond, you're like, I just want God, so I would respond too. But there was, um, it took, there was one moment in the prayer service where the, actually it was the pastor's daughter that was the first one to respond, that actually ended up responding to the prayer time, and I even have a picture of her going up front, and as soon as she did, all of a sudden then like, it was like free, no, okay, now everybody can respond. That's a whole other, that's a whole other sermon, but I want to encourage you, even on this point, I'm, remind, I'm reminded of that. Sometimes, you're, it's, sometimes you've written through releases of breakthrough for other people. So I want to encourage you guys, even in, we're just having worship time. Sometimes I get super excited and get loud in worship. Sometimes that happens, right? But, but usually when, I, when, when you release freedom, when you have freedom in worship or in prayer time, it, it encourages other people to go along with you. That's exactly yeah. what happened. That's right. And so in, in that service, she responded, and then all of a sudden, everybody responded. And me being my little nine-year-old self, you know, I knew, as we're being the good missionaries we are on the missions trip, that our opportunity was at this moment to pray for somebody, to pray for those that had responded. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, Andrew, you're a nine-year-old. 
it's amazing the prayers that children can pray, right? They have faith. And so, nine-year-old Andy, in down in Mexico, not knowing any Spanish, maybe I know how to say taco, right? Um, but uh, we joke about that. I went down to the altar, and I remember seeing this gentleman, um, and it was on the right side of the the altar that was in the church there, and he was praying, was kind of laid over on on the altar, and I said, man, I wanna, I want to go pray for that gentleman. Like I just had an unction, that urging inside of me, like I need, I need to pray for him. And I remember going up to him and laying my hands on his back and beginning to pray. I'm going to tell the rest of that story at the end. But I think if we do a survey of the, the, the Bible, I think it's pretty easy for us to say, as believers, as Christians, we should pray. Right? There's over and over again in the scriptures, we should pray, continually pray, pray always. Right? We can look at Matthew 5, 44, and Jesus giving instruction even that we should pray for those who persecute us. So those who are against us, those who are our enemies, we should pray for them. I was like, okay. Uh, we said in Matthew 6, the disciples were asking Jesus some instructions. Jesus, teach, teach us. Teach us how to pray. And so there's instructions in, in Matthew chapter 6 that we should pray this way. When we, when, when we pray, we shouldn't have to pray out loud in many words for everybody to hear, but you can pray privately, and, and God will hear those prayers. It's also recorded in Matthew chapter 6, the Lord's Prayer, and how we should pray and approach God in prayer, and the Lord is, is, is honored and holy, right? And then going into our requests and praying even for those, uh, praying for forgiveness and praying for provision and praying even that His kingdom would come. So we know that, that there's an instruction even to pray. In Romans 12, verse 12, it also says that we should be in hope, that we should be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. That should be the mark of a believer. We should, we should have hope. We should be faithful. We should be full of joy, patient, and, and faithful in prayer. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, we read that last week, right after the Lord uh, gives, or after Paul gives the, the armor of God, then he, then he encourages us that we should also pray in the Spirit on all occasion with all kinds of prayers and requests. In Philippians chapter 4, it says, that the believer should not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in prayer and petition and thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. In Colossians 4, 2, it tells us that we should devote ourselves to prayer and be watchful and thankful. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says that we should pray continually. In 1 Timothy 2, 2 verse 1, it says that uh, Paul was urging Timothy, he urged them first to pray, and to intercede, and to give thanks for everybody. So there's just, I mean, I don't think any of us would say, no, um, I don't believe believers, Christians, followers of Jesus should be people of prayer. I mean, it's pretty plain in the scripture. We, sh we should be people of prayer. Mm -hmm. But it got me thinking as I thought about uh, being people of, of prayer, why prayer? I was watching some really disturbing videos um, this week of uh, uh, of some different uh, different faiths and, and their practices of how they get the attention of their gods and and I was really disturbed and I was like wow I'm I'm really thankful that I serve a God that asked me to pray and when I pray to Him He actually hears me that He's not like an idol that I have to beat myself or or He's not something I've made on my own that has no power no He He hears me He wants but what is it about prayer? Why should we pray? Why, why is this request made to us? And because I think if we don't answer this question, we, could, we, should, we can view prayer more as an obligation. So, okay, I am a Christian, so I have to pray. But I believe that if we have an understanding of prayer, then, it, then we really don't understand the, the power that we have in prayer that like we talked about last week, or the reason why God asks us to pray. What is it? about prayer that changes things? What is it about prayer that is important for us? What is it about prayer? Why do you ask me to pray? I don't know if you were that child when you were growing up, but I kind of liked um, rules, so I wasn't really that child. I was like, okay, there's a rule, I'll follow it. But I remember other siblings of mine that may or may not be present in the room um, <laughs> ask the question, why? Or I hear about um, 
my good friend Stephen in town, he, uh, he has a little tiny baby. You know, he's like, it, I'm waiting for the day where that, where that little baby turns into a little bit older and he begins to ask me questions of why. Or I talk to parents that have younger kids and they're like, you know, give me that question of well, why. Give me a reason for, for every, everything that I'm doing. Don't just tell me to do it. Because sometimes when we just, out of plain obedience, it becomes an obligation, it becomes a pressure on us. And prayer is anything but an obligation. It's anything but a pressure on us. It's not a weight that we, we carry. It's an opportunity that we have to talk to the living God, right? So why do we pray? When I was thinking about this, I also, one of the neat things we had an opportunity this week to be given a book, kind of uh, starting the first two chapters of the book, is, is a book called entitled If by Mark Batterson. I encourage you guys, if you haven't read any of Mark Batterson's work, go ahead and pick up right, the author of Mark Batterson. He has some really amazing books about the Holy Spirit. He, he came up with some other things last year, a couple years ago, about circles of prayer. How do you continue in prayer, circling things and, and asking God that he, he would um, come through in those things. But the, the book, this, this book is called If, and it's talking all about the possibilities that we have in God. And when I was reading it a little bit, it again began to stir me of the why, the why I pray. I pray, I believe we pray when we understand who God is. So I pray, why do, why do we as believers pray? We, we pray because of who God is. Our prayer life is determined, the level of our prayer life is determined by our view of who God is. I believe if we have a, if we have a large view of God, then our prayer life will increase. If we have a, a small view of God, if we have misunderstandings about who He is, if we don't understand that, that God is for us, then I believe that our prayer life diminishes. But as we get to know who God is, as we, is, is revealed to who God is, we pray because God is who He is. He is able to do exceedingly above and beyond anything we can hope for. Our prayer life, our, we pray because He is who He is. So when I, when I, don't pray. I, I really wanted to, to have a, a, uh, oh, a demonstration of a weight or, or, or having, having lots of things this week. One of the things that Wilfred De, De Jesus brought up, he brought up a bowl, of, uh, a bowl of water and he used it kind of like an illustration for his sermon. I was like, oh, I want to do some illustrated sermons, so maybe sometime soon do some illustrated sermons. But, but there's, there's a weight. When we, when we when we have a lack of prayer in our lives, but we carry all of our burdens, we carry all of our situations, we carry all of our things on our own. But in, in prayer, we go to a God. Why do we pray? Because we go to a God, we serve a God, like in Psalms 115, that actually cares on our behalf, He moves on our behalf, He's our help and He's our refuge. So on the flip side, I think when I don't pray, I carry everything on my own. I go, to, uh, go about my own way. I, I do all my circumstances on my own. I'm in my own being, I'm... I'm have my own capabilities. My life is is capped at my abilities, but when I pray, I'm capped by his abilities. Why pray? Because he is who he is. Why pray? Because we serve a God that's alive, a God that is that is active, a God who is strong. When we pray, we pray because our prayers begin to change us. As we pray, we're reminded of who God is. It's not just spiritual disciplines, okay, pray, read your Bible, and fast. But these spiritual disciplines, they remind us of who God is. They allow the person of God to, it, uh, we invite the person of God into who we are. So through prayer, we're inviting the activity of God into our everyday life. We're saying, God, you matter. God, I need you. God, you are supreme. God, I know I cannot do this with you. God, you are who you are, and I need that. It's like it's like almost as if one of the things in the Mark Batson book is like a, a like a lever. When I'm praying, it, I can I allow myself to leverage to lever who God is in my daily situations. You know, a, a, a lever, right? So on a, on a lever, if I wanted to move something really heavy, right? I get a little pivot point, right? Get a big lever, and the, the I I can 
put only minimal force on this side of it, and on this side of the lever, it, it can, the, the force is increased. So when we're praying, we pray because He is able, he, because we're, we are taking what He is and putting it into our putting or inviting who He is into our everyday life, and it changes us. My personality changes when I'm spending time in the presence of God, when I'm praying, when I'm but I might, in Philippians 4, 6-8, it says, we read that earlier, it says that the peace of the God passes all understanding. When we pray, we, we exchange my human emotions, who I am, for who God is. And that's why prayer produces this peace that passes all understanding. Because we take who He is and bring it into who I am. Prayer, why do we pray? Because God, it brings His character into who I am. In Matthew 26, this is really important. We're inviting God into our daily lives. In Matthew 26, 41, it says to be watchful and pray so that we won't fall into temptation. Mm -hmm. Inviting God, praying, inviting God into our situation, into our life, it changes even our desires. Why do I pray? Because it invites His character into who I am. It changes me. It changes my desires. That, so, Matthew 26, I won't even fall into temptation because I pray. And I'm inviting Him into... I also pray because I want I want God in my circumstances. We can go around the room and we can say, hey, yeah, we, we shared one little story of, like I said, we shared one little story of what God is doing and some, some neat activity. There's other people I know that have stories that, hey, this, is, this has been a tough week. We've been talking about Chi Alpha. If you guys would join uh, join us in praying for the campus, I would appreciate that. And we have uh, Rachel and I are finishing out this semester. We're uh, missionaries to the campus, helping helping students be reconciled to Jesus. And we need your prayers. There, there's been very evident activity of the enemy against God's work uh, on campus. And there's been some really dear friends for David and Marissa and myself and Rachel that are like that are struggling against the work of the enemy. And so we've been praying for the campus because we know that when we pray, we're inviting God into our everyday life. We're inviting God into our circumstances that are around us. And when he intervenes on our behalf, we get his results instead of my results. I can, I'm only, I, I can, I, in my abilities, and my giftedness or whatever, I, I'm very capped, but God is, has an infinite ability, infinite uh, um, possibilities with him. And so I'm inviting him into my circumstances knowing that I'll get his results. In, in praying, we invite God into our circumstances and it changes things. You guys know this, may know the story in Acts chapter 16. Now let's turn there. chapter 16, uh, verse 16 through uh, 40, we get the, the story of, of Paul and Silas, who are radical believers in the New Testament, going and doing the work of God, and inviting God into everyday situations. They're seeing people get saved, they're seeing miracles, they're seeing awesome things, and at this point in their ministry, they, they, um, they heal a lady and then get imprisoned like, wow, one, you know these guys are men, men of God because of the, the, their actions or their attitude while they're in prison. I'm like, when I, when I read this story, I'm like, wow, okay, these, these are men that, that seek after God. These are men that know who God is because when they're in the prison, what are they doing? Now, I, I'll be honest, I mean, like, sometimes my emotions are, I've got a bad day, I've got a bad report, get something going on around me, and I get a little discouraged. My emotions are affected by the things that are going on around me. I don't know if anybody else is in that boat. Nobody is. But sometimes the things around me, they affect my emotion. They upset me. They get me down. They, they steal my joy. And here it is, Paul and Silas in the prison. Verse 25 says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. So here's two men 
got put in prison. One, because of, one, maybe I was be a, re a little rejoicing because I got put in prison because of Jesus. I mean, that might cause me to be a little bit high on spirit. But, but at any point, they're they're sitting there and they're just they're like, "This is awesome. We're in prison, guys. Let's pray. Let's let's continue to talk to God. Let's let's think about how great He is. Let's think about how good He is." That's a whole, that's, again, we do, we'll, do, we'll do the next series on that, right? Attitudes in the middle of situations. So, but he's, in verse 25, says that they're, they're praying, they were singing. In verse 26, suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up when he saw the prison doors had opened, and he drew his sword, and he was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for the lights and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and your whole household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all, and all those in his house. And at the hour of the night, the jailer took them, washed their wounds, and immediately he and all his household were baptized. So we, why do we pray? We pray because we invite God into our everyday circumstances. Paul and Silas, they, they had every right to be uh, down. They had every right to, to be, uh, to, for their emotional state to be interrupted by the circumstances that they found themselves in. But they chose in that moment, I'm going to pray. I want to sing a song of worship to my Lord. I want to be reminded of who He is. And when they were reminded of who they when they prayed for his interaction in their everyday life, situations changed. The earthquake came, they became free. Not only did they free, they were free, but then it led into a story of salvation. The jailer's house jailer and his whole household that day became a believer. We pray because we invite God's who he is into our everyday circumstances, and it changes our circumstance, and brings out now to an amazing story that we're reading over 2,000 years later about a man, man who's in prison, but yet God broke into the situation and set him free. That's why we pray. Mm -hmm. Because we take who God is and bring him into our current circumstances. We're talking about, we can talk about provision, or we can talk about uh, healings, we can talk about whatever our current circumstances that we're walking through, I need you. Through prayer, we say, God, we need you. God, I want you. God, you are what I need in this circumstance. And that's why we pray. And God, come. I can't, I can't do it. I'm, it's impossible. None of this is going to work. God, you in my circumstances. I remember uh, yeah, praying for cars and things like that. You know, Rachel and I have never, never paid for a car yet. Kind of awesome. But but there's a situation where we're in, we're in uh, West Lafayette, and um, uh, West Lafayette, and we had one car. Rachel was was starting to work, and we, we said, you know what, we we need a car. But I had a schedule on campus. She had a, a schedule at um, a local daycare, and just the different situations and transportation wasn't working out. And so for a while we were praying, and no car, no extra money for a car. We're like, okay, we'll stop praying. So we just like forgot about. It. We're like, okay. I, I took the bus, you know, I was like doing whatever I could, hitching rides into campus, things like that. And, um, and about the year had passed and she, she had got the job, we needed, the, uh, we needed the other car. And we started talking to some of our mentors that was there at Purdue University. We were like, you know what, we're just going to do it. We're just, we'll just, I'll, I'll, She'll, do, she'll take some extra hours. We'll just get a car on loan, right? Like, I'm trying to work, I'm trying to get uh, out of college debt right now, and things like that. And the situation where we're like, yeah, but I just need, a, we need an extra car, so we'll just take a loan anyway. We'll just get a car. And uh, she, she our, our mentor at the time, she said, Are you, Andrew? <laughs> she talked kind of blunt. I was like, Andrew, are you stupid? Why would you get more debt if you're trying to get out of debt? And I, I said, yeah, it's probably not a good, a wide decision. He said, said, Andrew, when's the last time you prayed about this? It's like, I mean, we used to, we, we prayed about it before. I had a kind of righteous answer, right? It's like, well, we prayed about it before, but you know, nothing happened. So, you know, we just, well, we need the car, like now. Like the, the, the circumstances, we need, we need the car now. And I'm just going to get a loan. I'm just going to, going to get it, right? Oh, 
And I uh, said, well, Andrew, I don't think that's a wise decision. Why don't you go pray about it? And I was like, you know what? I respect you enough. Uh, as my mentor, you speak into my life. I'm going to start praying about it. And uh, so we were like, hey, let's pray. So that was a, a Monday. I had my one-on-ones with, uh, with her on a mon- uh, uh, my mentor on a Monday. And then basically by Friday, um, I, got a, I had already received a text message that, that somebody, the God had told them to give me the car actually a year ago when we, when we needed it. And then now God was reminding them of that, and we received a free car. Thinner, and anyway, there's another another free car on the way. What is it? Yeah, pray so we get free, free cars. No. Um, <laughs> no. But there's a, we had we had a circumstance that as in in the current situation we are in, there is no way <coughs> physically possible for us to get what we needed. And so we said, you know what? The wise counsel told us, hey, seek God. Because her view of God at the moment was much greater than what I, I could imagine. She'd, she'd been through situations in her life where she had seen God come through and provided for her in situations, in circumstances that began to change. She had, had one of her stories, she had teeth that, that needed to be operated on and she had no money for the operation and all of a sudden uh, she got a, a letter in the mail, an uh, anonymous letter with $1,000 that paid for her tooth and she's like, Andrew, I know God comes through in circumstances he said, you're going through something right now. You need something that you don't have. Go ahead and ask God. He's able to do it for you. Because the, this is, I believe, as we talk about ourselves being a family of servant missionaries, we're a family because we're going through those different situations. Each one of us have different situations we're going through. And we're here to encourage one another to say, hey, there's something I went through. I, I leaned on God and he came through for me. There's a bigger view of God. Trust in who he is. Pray to him and he was going to come through for you. That's why we need each other in this room. We don't just see, sit around and, and, and do our little one hour, hour and a half service and leave. We need one another because we're going to be able to encourage one another. In the moment of our, where our situation becomes larger than our abilities, we remind each other, hey, turn to God in prayer. He's going to come through for you. That's why we're family. That's why we encourage one another. Amen. So not only does, uh, when we invite God into our everyday lives through prayer, it changes who we are, it changes our circumstances, but it changes others. A few weeks ago, we were talking about finances, and we said the compassion, if we hold people in our heart, it changes the way we carry our money, our, our dollars in our pocket. But I would also propose to you and say that if we carry people in our heart, it changes the way we pray. It changes the way we approach God. Amen. When I talk about the, the situation, the, the story that I started with, and the man that was there on the altar, and he's, he's um, praying to God, and of course, in Spanish, I had no idea, I had no idea what he was praying for, but in that moment, me as my little nine-year-old self said, I'm, I don't know what I could do for him other than I could pray for him. I said, I know I could. I, I don't know how to. I don't even know how to speak to him. I don't even know what he's asking God for. But I, I know that I can pray for him, and, the, and my prayer for him is going to be better than any ability that I have for him at that moment. And so I begin to pray for him, and then as I begin to pray for him, my prayers begin to be, uh, be begin to become specific as the Holy Spirit begin to show me what his actual need was, and the Holy Spirit begin to show me that his need was was not just for a prayer, not just for an encounter with God, but that it was his back was out of place and that he needed a healing. And I remember beginning to pray for him in the name of Jesus that his back would come in line, that all of his pain would leave. And I remember praying this specifically, that, that he would be able to provide for his family. I had no idea what the prayer was, but I knew I, I knew that if I could get a hold of God, that God could come through for him. And as I prayed for him and, and healing actually came into his body later that evening, we were at the hotel room. I remember getting a, uh, there was a knock on the door and the interpreter, uh, one of the interpreter, local missionaries, had, had come in and talked to dad and said, hey, did Andy you know, pray for this gentleman at, at, uh, tonight at the service? And um, later it was confirmed, yes, I had prayed for him. And he had actually been out of work for six months with Pinko with a back injury and hadn't been able to provide for his family. When we pray, when we pray, we pray to a God who is able. Amen. Right? 
We pray to Him and we get His results in our, in our circumstances. We get right. His results in other people's lives. When we know there's things that are going on around the world, when we know things that are going on in our neighborhood, we know things are going on in each other's lives, what is the greatest thing we could do? One, I could offer you what I could do for you. Maybe I have some wisdom to imply or, or maybe I could have some ability that would help you through it. But what is the greatest thing that we could do to help others around us is to invite the God of the impossible into their situations. So when we get, begin to say, when people come to me and say, hey, Andrew, this is the situation I'm going through, I, I do my best to offer some wisdom to them, offer some, maybe some scripture to them, offer some practical application to them. But then when I say to you, or when we say to each other, hey, and I'll pray for you, it isn't like a, it isn't a scapegoat. It isn't like a second option. It's actually the greatest thing that we could do for each other, is say, hey, on your behalf, I'm gonna to go to God of, of the impossible and invite him into your situation. It's not just a second thing. It's not a, oh, I don't know what else to do, so I'll pray for you. No, I'm going to pray for you because I believe when I pray to you, God's going to answer my prayer. God's going to come through. He's going to change your situation and what you're going through. Prayer. Why pray? Because of who God is. We pray because of who He is. Because He is great. We don't pray to, to things made by, by human hands. We pray to one who is alive and willing. Romans 8. I love this. Romans 8 says that God is for us. God is for us. That's who He is. Why pray? Because He's for us. He's for us. He's for you. Mark, in, in his book, he quotes one of his friends. That said this, he said, um, everything I rejected about God wasn't God. Well, I was asking, while I was asking, you know, why we should pray, I thought, well, why don't we pray, right? We don't pray because everything we reject about God, everything we, we think wrongly about God actually isn't God. God is for us. Sometimes, those in this room, the thought that God isn't for me hinders me from praying. I don't want to, sometimes we don't want to talk to a God that isn't for us, but guess what? He is, he, he is for us. He is for us. Sometimes we don't want to talk to God because we think, hey, we're not good enough. Well, no, actually, God said that he sent his son, and now that we have received his son, we are good enough. It says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, that we can approach, because of what Jesus has done, now we can approach his throne with confidence. To receive mercy and grace. To receive who He is. Amen. We can now pray and receive Him in our everyday life. Because of what His Son has done for us. Wow. This, this prayer thing is amazing. It begin, when, we say, when I say it changes things, it doesn't, just, it doesn't change things. Like Sometimes that word gives a negative, you know, negative content to change things. It brings who God is into our everyday situation. So when it changes, it always changes things for the better. It always changes things towards His kingdom. It always changes things because we get what He is, who He is, in our situations, in our personal life, and in others around us. And we want to see, we want to see our, our families change. We want to see our families have an environment of love and of peace and of joy in our home. Let's start praying together. Let's start praying. Let's start inviting God into our everyday situation. Because when we do that, we're going to get Him in our in our families. We want we want a workplace that is that, that brings joy and, and there's and there's peace in the workplace and, and there's there, there's there's understanding and, and we get along. And I'm going to invite God into my workplace. And I've got physical things in my body that, that are out of source and out of order. Well, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. Why not pray? Why not invite God into our everyday situation? Because we're going to get Him. We think about our, our neighborhoods and we think about our nation. We think about uh, and all these different situations that are happening around the globe. Let's pray. Let's invite God into these situations. Because when we do pray, when we pray, why do we pray? Because we're, we get Him. We get more of Him in our lives. I think in responding, in, 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 in responding, uh, I want to read this this passage again in Psalms one fifteen.
remind us of who God is. Psalms 115 says, Not to us, Lord. This is what I love about, love about the story of Paul and Silas is that as they're praying, it's not to their own glory. They, their prayers weren't any different than anybody else's prayers, but it was prayers they connected with God and they brought him into the situation. And he and God received the glory. The Psalms 115.1 Not to us, Lord. <coughs> Take a moment and as, as we read the scripture, as the scripture is, is read, <coughs> I think it, make the point one more time though, that our, our view of God the measure of our view of God measures our prayers. Paul and Silas knew, they saw the activity of God around them all the time. They, they, they saw the activity of God and they, they knew Him. So when they prayed, they, did, they, they had a view of God that I think way, uh, is way larger than, than my view at this current moment. And so sometimes I have to pray. I know we've, we've mentioned this prayer a lot, but Praying, God, help my heart believe. Help me believe who you are. Because when we understand who God is, it's, it's easy to pray. When, we have, when our view of God is, 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 is huge, man, our prayers are simple and easy. Man, the first thing I want to do when I hear you know, something going on in my brother's life, man, I want to pray for you. So as I read the scripture, we can even, even silently in your heart be praying, God, increase my view of who you are. All right? Psalms 115. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. Because of your love and your faithfulness. Why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. But their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. The idols have mouths, but they cannot speak. But God, you can speak. Their idols, they have eyes, but they cannot see. But God, you have eyes, and you see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. But God, you have ears, and you hear us. God, those idols, they have no noses, but they and they cannot smell. But God, you have a nostril, and, and you smell. Their prayers are good incense to your nostrils. They have hands, but they cannot feel. God, you have hands... But you move, you feel, you move on our behalf. God, those idols, they don't have feet, and they cannot walk. But God, you have feet, and you walk, and you move. Nor can they utter a sound in their throats. God, I thank you, because you are God that can speak. You can make sound, you can speak to us. Verse 8 says, those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. Father, I thank you that we can trust in you, and we will be made like you. Verse 9 says, all Israel trusts in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The house of Aaron trusts in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and cheer. Father, I thank you that we trust in you. That you are our help and our shield. Verse 12. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless his people Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord. Small and great alike. Father, I thank you that I may be small. Father, but you will bless me just like the great that I read in the Bible. <coughs> Verse 14, may the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord and the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence. It is we who exalt extol the Lord, both now and forever. Praise the Lord. You can bow your heads with me. As I was thinking about 
possible responses to this message about prayer. I thought first, the first way we can respond, and, and maybe there's there's some in this room that would ask me, hey Andrew, Andrew, can you pray for me that my view of God would be enlarged? You know, I'm honest, Andrew, if I'm honest, sometimes I don't pray because I don't view God the way I should. I don't have a big enough view of God, and so sometimes that affects how often I, I pray to Him. If you had to see this morning, you say, Andrew, I, I, need, I would ask that you pray that my view of God would increase. Would you raise your hand this morning and say, yeah, Andrew, I need, my view of God needs to increase. Thank you. Thank you. I want to pray for those, for those of you this morning. Father, thank you that in Ephesians, Paul prayed that we would be filled with all wisdom and knowledge. And we would have a greater understanding of, of who you are. Of your desire to do immeasurably more than we can hope or imagine. Father, I, I thank you for the honesty of those that would say, hey, Andrew, I, I'm raising my hand. I need, a, I need a bigger view of who God is. So, Father, today I pray for revelation. Father, that our eyes would be opened to who you are. Increase, Father, their wisdom. Increase their understanding. Increase their revelation of who you are, your love for them, your greatness for them. Your, in what Romans, 5, what Romans 8 says, that you are for them. Father, may, their, may that revelation grow inside of them. I like a plant, Father Lord, may it be watered by my prayers and by your word. And may your, your, the revelation of who you are grow. May it grow, Father. As I thought about prayer, we say, why pray? And we talk about the fact that inviting God into our everyday life, leveraging who he is, and it, it changes the things in our, in our circumstances. I said, we, we can't end today without praying for the needs of those in this room. I mean, I can't, we, can't have a, we can't have a series about prayer and not say, you know what, let's pray with one another. Let's pray for the things we're going through. Let's pray for our circumstances. So this morning, I, I don't know everybody's, I don't know everybody's situation. I don't know what you're going through. But I, I know... I know that I know that I know that we have a God who is able. Yes, we do. I know it. I'm, I'm convinced of it. I, as I read scripture, as I, as I learn about who he is, as I walk with him, he is, man, larger than life. He's he, beyond our imagination. <coughs> and as soon as we pray to him, he comes through. Amen. This morning, if that's you, you said to me, Andrew, I would love prayer. I would love to, uh, for you just to agree with me. I want to invite you to come forward. Uh, old school altar call response. Now. But I want to invite you, if you say, Andrew, I need, I need you to agree with me in prayer that, that this circumstance changes, that my life changes, that the life of others that are around me changes. I want to invite you forward. And I encourage you. I encourage you, those, those of you, maybe you say, hey, I, I, I don't need prayer for a situation, but I could agree in prayer with somebody. When other people respond, come join me. I mean, I was a nine-year-old little boy. And I said, no, God can, God can answer my prayer. God can answer your prayer. So when other people respond today, and if you say, yeah, I want to join you in prayer, come on. Come. We're just going to have a time of prayer, asking God into our circumstances. Right. Father, I thank you that, that in this moment, this is, a, this is a holy moment, Father, because we're approaching your throne. And I thank you that because of what Jesus has done, we can come to you with confidence. Yeah. With confidence, knowing that your grace and your mercy is going to be poured out in our circumstances, in our situations. So today as we pray, Father, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Have your way, Jesus. That's you. If you have something you're going through, and you said, I need prayer. I want prayer. I want God to come into my situation.